So what are our big things on the day? Um, we've got the uh, interview from Jesse. Thank God. I grabbed uh, one of her songs from her YouTube to play because I didn't get a chance to edit the music from the That's show. That's okay. And I've got the um, interview with uh, Rolson. That's 10 minutes. The Jesse thing is 11 minutes, 15 minutes with the song. As we go, I'll figure out if I need to, to add something else in there. And of course, I want my 10 minutes too. Yeah, yeah. So I think oh, we, have, we don't have Barb. No, no Barb. Okay. Big Mouth Marie gets to talk more. <laughs> <laughs> and, and can I do, can, can we do like our regular, uh, what's Nate been up to? Yeah, sure. Okay. A minute and a little bit less than a minute and a half. Okay. Oh my. And the land acknowledgement? You doing it or am I? Oh, you haven't been here a while. You're welcome to do it if you want. Okay, thank you. We have 30 seconds. Okay. Good morning for this special edition of Monday Special Blend. We are live in studio and it is a happy Christmas day and guess who's here? <laughs> guess who's back? Uh, yes, I'm here. <laughs> Welcome back, Marie. It's good to see you in person again. It's, it's been, great to see you, brother. It I seems love like this. it's been so long. It has. Please let me do the uh, land acknowledgement. Go ahead. Um, we sit on Algonquin territory unseated. We respect their elder and we respect that this is unceded land and we acknowledge the generosity of the Algonquin people and Anishinaabe for our presence here. Thanks. Awesome. That was great, Maria. Thank you. Oh, you've been through a lot the last few years. I have been through a crazy bunch of stuff. But first, before we get into all my stuff, tell me what you've been doing, my friend. What's Nate been up to? Well, um, I went to, oh boy, there's a list of the stuff that we did since uh, the last time we, you asked me. Uh, I, I got time. See, <laughs> I went to see the Tin Constellations. Um, I saw that they were having a show at the Redbird. There, they had a CD EP release party. So I went to see them uh, live. And, uh, well, I, I messaged them up on Instagram two days before the show. I was like, hey, I see you're having a show. You want me to do some video for you? And they're like, yes, please. Uh -huh. We'll add you to the list. So oh, Wonderful. I showed up and I did a long show. for. Uh, I recorded the whole show for them. There was another one there. Um, I forget his name now, but I've got the video. Is it, is it up yet? Oh, yeah. On your YouTube? Yes, it is. It okay, is. which anybody can find. Nathaniel Newton. Yeah, they seem very pleased with it. Awesome. And then I finally got around to finishing the editing for the CA and Sunny at the Thursday Special Blend oh, fundraiser. Good. Good. Lovely people. Yeah. I also edited the video for Iconoclast. Uh, w w the t-shirt you're wearing right now? Yes. <laughs> they gave me the t-shirt after they saw me filming the show. Uh, they've taken a look at it, but um, I haven't published that one yet. The CA and Sunny one is yes. out. Anybody can watch that. Okay. And then just those ones, yeah, I think that turned out pretty well. Iconoclast was a little bit high on the uh, volume so level. Volume, yeah. So, I yeah, so I ended up using the camera mic instead of the board mic, and I still think it sounds pretty good. Oh, good. Yeah, the, the camera didn't overload, but the, the board was a little bit overloaded, a little hot, so I just I decided not to use the That was smart, yeah. Oh, what else? Chris brought me to... Um, Chris White. Oh, yes. Our, 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 the third, the trio here. <laughs> He's not in today. <laughs> Merry Christmas, Chris. Yeah, well, um, at the... Uh, oh, what was it called? The, uh, the Canadian Spaces live show. Yeah. I said something with... Um, and I, I was talking to Carolyn, and Carolyn said something that I think should be on a T-shirt. What? It all started when Chris White had an idea. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Chris White comes up with a lot of wonderful ideas. He's the heart and soul around here. He took over for Chopper McKinnon 13 years ago um, when Chopper passed. Canadian Spaces airs on CKCU every Saturday morning. And it's a wonderful showcase of, of Canadian folk, amazing music. And you can listen back. The beauty of being on CKCU 93.1 
is that you can watch on demand. I mean, mm-hmm. you can listen on demand. Exactly. And anything that that Nate's recorded is an extra bonus onto what gets out on the air so that's why i refer people to his youtube because if you want that extra little bit in terms of all the stuff we talk about yeah (laughs) what's going on now where he's been all that stuff just check in with his uh with his uh, youtube and you'll be happy yeah i'll put links on the ckcufm.com website playlist for the monday blend where people can just go and find it there pretty easily so Absolutely. speaking of Chris, he brought me to this, uh, to the uh, Riverside United Church where he did a Christmas sing along for a bunch of um, adults with, with disabilities. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Uh, I, I would have been there had I been able to go. Yeah, that's always yeah, a well, fun you were, show. You were in quarantine though, just so yeah, I was. about to have your yep your big surgery. Yep. Do you want to tell people about how that went? I had hip replacement surgery uh, this last Thursday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, five days ago down in Cornwall. I chose Cornwall rather than Ottawa because otherwise I would have been on a longer waiting list and I really need to get this done. Uh, so I went down to Cornwall. They were amazing people. I had a great time, if you can say a great time when you're having a hip replaced. They get you out of bed and they get you walking. As soon as your anesthetic has come off enough that you're not just going to fall straight on your face. And so I was amazed to be walking practically right away. Not Not stepping up, you know, slow shuffle walk, I have to say, but walking. And because my doctor does a special uh, uh, way, he he does it anterior, which means in the front. Normally, most surgeons do the side or the back, which is approximately a 10-inch scar uh, incision. Uh, But the going across the front anterior like he does, it disturbs less tissue. And uh, it's only a 3 or 4-inch. I have uh, 20 staples right now. But anyone who is going to have hip replacement, I'd say, yeehaw, get the anterior method because there aren't any restrictions on movement. There's less chance of the hip uh, dislocating, uh, shorter recovery time, and uh, I I can bend forward which is something you can't do on the other. I, I can't bend backwards, but I can bend forwards. So I have a lot of mobility with, with not having these restrictions. The only restriction I have, of course, is uh, not twisting sideways. Uh, but other than that, I basically don't have any. Um, uh, they did it with an epidural. Uh, so it took a little while for everything to wake up. Uh, after the surgery, but everything did. And uh, f- uh, for the most part, I am. Oh, oh, I'm so relieved to have it done. I'm so happy to be on the other side of the six surgeries I've endured this year. But I'm cancer free, ladies and gentlemen. I'm cancer free. I have no cancer. And, uh, and I have a, a, a new cornea and mm. I have a new hip for Christmas. Oh, that's great. <laughs> That's great. The 2024 is going to be great for you, I think. It, it's, it, yes, it already is, because I'm sitting here in this chair thinking about Chopper McKinnon. Oh, well, it's really good to have you back here. Thank you. I heard um, your doctor is famous. He is famous. You told me his name, and I mean, you're like, like, wait, I watch him on YouTube all the time. I didn't know that he was working Dr. at a Dr. Raynor. Yeah, he's amazing. And... While we were outside the operating room waiting to go in, he was sitting recording a podcast. And I asked him what he was doing because at first, uh, I have to say, I thought maybe he was talking to me. And then I realized that he wasn't. And I asked, so what are you doing? And he said, I'm podcasting. And I went, wow, good job. Because when I looked at the number of videos that he has, he has over... A, 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 a million? I'm not sure how views? many videos. No, uh, no, views. Views? Oh, he's got way more than a million views. He has here. a lot of followers. I'll try 57 million views. Oh, my God! <laughs> <laughs> 
three hundred and seventy videos. He's uh he's got f over half a million subscribers on YouTube. Wow. Uh, I've been watching him for a good uh, I don't know six months a year since I first found him on YouTube. Mm -hmm, he mm -hmm. does a lot of um kind of like a breakdown of the science of things like um uh, the uh, there's the discovery show about um a uh, deadliest warrior and um the which uh, which weapon is stronger than which weapon and it goes into a great deal of uh, <laughs> technical detail well, i won't say too much for sheena's for sake. Schema squeamish people exactly yeah it's, it's good morning <laughs> <laughs> but yeah yeah it's, to be honest i um i don't follow every video he makes just because sometimes it's a little too much for me <laughs> <laughs> but for people that are interested in that he's a great source of accurate and and um, detailed information about stuff like that and he's not selling you anything well, it's it's not about that it's about helping you yeah he's he's pretty cool i love that yeah i i, I didn't expect it uh and to all the staff as well, because they were amazing over there. And my sister had a slip and fall in the hospital, uh, and uh, the staff was just amazing around that as well. So hats off to uh, Cornwall Community Hospital for being such an amazing hospital to, uh, to have my hip replacement. I, I thank you all very, very much. So um, a couple of... Oh boy, it was a couple months ago now. We had a I conversation know. with Jesse Green. What I done was I I I uh, uh, I really wanted to showcase Jesse Green because she is an um, she's an up and coming, but she's been around for a long, long time doing a lot of cool stuff with different musicians with different bands and i think that's what adds to her magic the fact that she's gotten into all kinds of other uh genres as well as blues and she brings everything together with uh, an enthusiasm and an honesty that i really appreciate um, and she rocks. She definitely rocks. And so um, I asked her if we could do an interview with her, and I booked some space at the Rainbow Bistro. And we went up there, and we did an interview and recorded the songs. Um, the songs we're going to have to play a little bit later. We're going to play one of her other ones. Yeah, we'll probably have that for next week or the week after. Yeah. Right now we're going to play that wonderful interview as well as immediately followed by... Uh, one of her songs and her name again is Jessie Green look her up well good afternoon we are at Ottawa's Home of the Blues uh, Rainbow Bistro and we are here for CKCU 93.1 FM mighty CKCU and our guest today is the fantabulous Jessie Green welcome thank you for having me Ray. I'm so glad you're here um, what, folks, what you're going to hear is some fabulous uh, music and interspears with some conversation. And uh, first of all, what an interesting name you have, Jesse Green. Why, thank you. Jess, my full name is Jessmine Walters Green. <sighs> what a great name. But Jesse, Jesse for the band. For the band, exactly. Spell it the boys' way. Yeah. So we don't get cut out. <laughs> <laughs> Too easy to happen. Too easy to happen. It's easy. Yeah. I've been watching you grow for the last 10 years or so, and i got to say, leaps and bounds, girl. You have just taken on the feel, the rhythm. Everything is now part of your soul, part of who you are, part of everything that you do. And I love that because you're not trying to copy nobody. You're not trying to be nobody. You're just being you. And thank you. That's amazing. Did you set out saying to yourself, I'm just going to do it my way? Uh, I think I set out saying I was going to do things different. When I grew up, when I was in middle school, we, had, we decided to have uh, put together a, a Beatles cover band when I was about 12 and of course all the other kids wanted to throw tomatoes at us because we weren't very popular but uh, <laughs> at the time of the uh, the techno that was out at that time oh, 
yeah. So I miss my my generation. My my parents. My parents were older, and uh, I love the music of the '60s and '70s. And so that's where where I got my my inspiration. Big uh, big time uh, from Bonnie Raitt, Joni Mitchell, and although my voice is wildly different than Joni Mitchell, I love her songwriting. Yes. And Bonnie is just my guitar hero. My Absolutely. And my mom. My mom was a singer, and she uh, she taught me to harmonize. And my grandpa and my dad, both of them taught me. My dad taught me guitar mm-hmm. from young a young age. And then uh, I used to busk around in uh, in Ottawa when I was seventeen mm-hmm. um, with my friend Joe and Sean, and we'd stay out all night and. Joe now does sound at the rainbow. Joe is sitting right over there. And he's sitting right over there. Cute as a button. <laughs> anyway, we used to bus down here, and then I uh, I got approached to join a reggae funk Afrobeat band, uh, Joko. Um, oh. Tony D always affectionately calls it Joyko, <laughs> but it was Joko. <laughs> that was the first blues fest show we had. It was uh, with Joko. Um, and then I formed, a, I joined a Frank and Jesse James. Well, it was Frank James, then Frank and Jesse James at the Rainbow, and played with them, and then formed my own band, the Jesse Green Band. How long has that been running? That one has been. We've been around since probably 2008, 2009. Ah, see, that's what I'm familiar with. All right. I see you playing at Irene's, and you just stop that on that floor. And that's what's beautiful about going to Irene's, is that you really get that intimate kind of a um, uh, way of receiving the, the sound, receiving the music, sharing in the music. And I find what you do is something that you share, that you send out. Oh, thank you. I, I like to communicate with it. Uh, Pretty much my only source of well, I can speak, but prefer to speak for, through music. I, I find that your songwriting is so real. I love that. But tell me, when you comes down to finishing this album that everybody's waiting for, how long can we expect that? Maybe in the spring. I would hope so. I'm looking at uh, some sponsorship options right now, and uh, working really hard on that and getting a women's blues review together for. For Ottawa, um, and talking to some Toronto musicians that are interested in that as well, and uh, have some wonderful talent. I hope uh, in in with us here, all the the Ottawa staples. We're going to put together a yes. really kick-ass show, <laughs> nice. a new open women's review. So it's going to be open to everyone. Oh, I love that! I love that. The Rainbow Bistro has been Ottawa's home of the blues for at least the last 38, maybe 39 years. I know I've been singing here for 37 years. That's why I call it my home away from home. I even got a subpoena here, as a matter of fact. (laughs) They came here instead of going to my house. Imagine that. Anyway, that's a story for another day. When we get, when we have to talk about my axe murderer, we're not going to talk about him today. No, no, no. He just got out, so I'm like, shh, Jesus. So tell me, when you go into Irene's, into that environment, it's like home, isn't it, for you? Oh, yeah, for sure. I've been uh, playing with those boys for, seems like, <laughs> seems like more than it's been. Like older really. brothers. Way back in the day, yeah. yeah they're yeah, like older like, brothers. Yeah, I watch the way they, they watch you, the way they, they're totally there for you, 150%. Uh, I think that's pretty awesome. In your music, what way do you feel you, you're going to go next? You, what have you been exploring next? I'm planning to take no prisoners. <laughs> I love it. And uh, basically, I'll go wherever um, wherever I can go that will, will, will take me in. And if they're not ready for me, I'll go somewhere else. <laughs> Exactly. We'll be right back. We're going to play uh, some music from the rainbow uh, from our dear friend, Jesse Green. Hang on. Everybody. 
everybody back to our conversation with Jesse Green. Thanks so much, Jesse, for coming out and being a part of CKCU's everything. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. And who's this fabulous, good-looking bass player you have with you today? <laughs> Dave Schrader. He's on fire. He is on fire. He was awesome today. Somebody get the water. <laughs> We got Dave Schrader, we got Jeff Astley. Oh, Jeff! Power Trio. Oh my god, yes, absolutely. Yeah, they're fantastic musicians. I can't say enough about them. Wonderful, oh. wonderful men. Jeff is also a very magical guy. I was doing a program for adults with disabilities out, out at, at uh, Britannia Beach, and he came in, I hired him to come in and do some drumming work with them, and he taught them simple roles and things, and he was so patient and kind, and the folk, these are adults with disabilities who have like this much patience, you know? And he was so good with them that he really made a difference in their lives. And I paid him, and I thanked him, but I don't think I ever thanked him enough for what he gave those folks. I'm sure he meant a lot. Yeah, I certainly did. There's a lot of musicians that give and give and give and give, and, um, this fundraiser that you have coming up at the end of the month is uh, is one of those. It's uh, it's going to be uh, it's just a it's a vinyl release, uh, Angelina Hunter Trio, and the first of a series of uh, female led fronted bands uh, that we're going to do building up to the um, to the Blues Review, the Auto Blues Review. So um, they've uh, they did a, uh, a kickstart, a kick, I think, or maybe it was a GoFundMe to get um, to to record this album, and then I'm looking at doing a similar thing myself, and then also to run this review. Yeah, don't forget Factor Grants, uh, Ontario Arts Council. It's been a rough go for everybody because of COVID, everything's shutting down, and everybody getting sick and whatever, and we we lost a lot of good people. Soldiers of fortune, he's a man of war. Just can't remember who he's fighting for. Like, when you lose these iconic players, it makes you really sit back and think for a second about how lucky we are to be where we are when we are. And to be able to bring what we have to the table for others. I watched the kids that were at Irene's when you were playing, they had to leave, of course, with their families as the evening went on, but they were allowed to stay for like a song or two. And there were two little girls, and they were just like, oh, 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 oh. a woman that rocks. She rocks. And, it, and their parents really had a hard time taking them out of there. There was a bit of screaming, I have to admit. But to see their faces, to see when they saw you, and this was just you tuning up and just like doing a couple of little riffs, you know, like they weren't even doing a thing yet, blew their minds. And one was asking for a guitar on the way out the door while the other one was crying. Oh, she's so smart. <coughs> <laughs> get the guitar, get it off, and they make it happen. Did you feel that from your family as well? I did, yeah. I was lucky my parents were both uh, are both graphic uh, designers and artists and musicians, and so I had that support uh, from them from the beginning, from the get-go. I started with classical piano, and I, uh, uh, yeah, look, my dad taught me all the early, early rock, 50s rock stuff, and uh, yeah, my mom would play piano, and we always had music in the home, so that was, that was great. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And now in your home, what do you play? Who do you listen to? Dallas. <laughs> I listen to all sorts of stuff. Big Bella Flack fan. I love the bluegrass. I love the old country. I love the, the classical. I love funk and soul and pretty much I think Frank Zappa is a big go-to oh, for absolutely, me. Absolutely. Um, and uh, did a lot for freedom of speech in, in music as well. Yes. Yes. Um, and I, I've, got, I've got a chance to come full circle and, and be teaching as well and love to see uh, kids come out when they come out. Sometimes we play at the uh, Atomic Rooster or when 
talks a little bit earlier showed. So I've had kids as young as two, right, you know, with their <laughs> phones, and, yeah. which is a good, responsible thing to do. Give them your earphones. <laughs> Let them adjust, acclimatize uh, slowly. Um, but yeah, I've had a, a kid band open for me or jump up and play a few songs. Uh, Kyle, who is fantastic, uh, Kyle Elver, and um, he, a uh, little guy, Mario, who was just maybe nine and just shredded his first <laughs> with a full band and just had a place in, in tears and standing ovation. So that really means a lot. That's the giving that gives back so hard. It's just. It's amazing, absolutely amazing. And I knew you'd do that stuff because you have a big, beautiful heart. So thanks so much for being here with us. Ladies and gentlemen, I just want you to sit back, relax, and listen. Jesse Green, ladies and gentlemen. That was Jesse talking to Maria at the Rainbow a couple of months ago and how, unfortunately, the uh, event that Jesse was talking about has already passed because yeah. we were too slow at getting this published. However, if you want to see her live, she's going to be at Irene's next weekend. What? That's awesome. Yes, January 5th, she'll be at Irene's doing a live show, as well as on the 9th, she will be with her bass player at Broadway's Bar and Grill. Mm -hmm. And then on the 17th of February, she's got another show uh, where she's on the John Allaire show. Oh, John, yes. And that's at 1070 Bank Street. He's awesome fun. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, when Jesse did that show, it was also a, a vinyl release. I went. Uh, it was a, a, a vinyl re release for... Um, uh, Angela Hunter, sorry, and uh, it was fab. It was absolutely fab. Uh, and, and Ms. Hunter is also someone that I've been following for an awful long time. She first uh, uh, came into my world, as it were, back in 1999 when her and her brother wanted to participate in Blues in the Schools, and they were told it, uh, the Blues in the Schools competition was about high school students. And I said, let her in anyway. Um, and they were fat, her and her brother, wonderful, wonderful artists. And she's just grown into this beautiful, take the stage woman, kick, <clears throat> take no prisoners performer. Uh, to see her wandering around the audience playing solos for people, like just playing for them and... and, and and reacting with them she's she's definitely got the gift so if, if you want to find her stuff please look her up because uh, she's amazing and as far as jesse um she's doing this blues review for women this is her first this was the first one and she included me to do a song oh wow shocked me um, and she said it's because uh, I've been a female band leader leading my band for 38 years. <laughs> so she says, if we're going to do a blues review, we got to have you. <laughs> well, to be fair, it makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> and so she had me up on stage and we did uh, one of my favorites, Voodoo Woman, together. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was a great, great, great time, even with my cane, you know, like... And before me, little Mariel, Mario, Ariel. I, I forget how to spell how to uh, spell uh, pronounce his la his first name because there was an A in there or something. Anyway, just a young guy got up and he's soloing and he's just killing it. And I'm uh, I'm s sitting on the side of the stage in the, in the wings waiting to go on at that point because uh, with my cane I had to like get up there and wait uh, earlier and he went up and he just blew the audience away they gave him a standing ovation and that little guy he really rocked um, it was a beautiful extended solo amazing stuff amazing stuff and so she's going Jesse's going to be putting together more of these uh uh, women who lead bands, band leaders, um, 
concerts in the Ottawa area over the next little while. And uh, I'm really looking forward to that. This is a woman who truly gives back to the community, and, and I love that. When, when Mark and, and um, w- when a group of us decided to, to uh, Mark and Jed, Rashad and I, uh, decided to co-create the Ottawa Blues Society, um, this is what we had in mind to support people like Jesse, to support the Ottawa scene. And now I'm so glad to see that the Ottawa Blues Society has truly uh, stepped into their own and are supporting and doing more things that, that really make a difference for folks. So congrats, Ottawa Blues Society, for stepping up and doing the right thing. Well, we have time to play another one of your songs. You oh, I'd love that. Um, uh, Rusty Cage Voodoo Child. Oh, yeah, I like that one. Yeah, oh, yeah. Okay. I'm going to play uh, her performance that she did at Blues Fest. So the previous one that we played was also at Blues Fest um, this year, uh, about four or five months ago. So, Jesse Green. <laughs> and gentlemen, that was Jesse Green with Dave Schrader on the bass, uh, Jeff Aslan on drums. Dave Schrader is an instructor. He's a performance instructor of electric bass here at Carleton University. Nice, nice. Thank you for so much for bringing them in to talk to, uh, setting all that up at the rainbow there. So, um, you know how Chris is really popular again, right? So, um, people, he was invited to come and sing Christmas songs at the, um, oh, what was the name of this? It's, it's one of the, uh, community centers here. They're having a Christmas meal and, uh, the name of it has, bl- I'm blanking on the name because whatever, but, uh, I actually got to meet somebody there and do an interview with, uh, Ralston King, who's Ward 13 city councilor for the Rideau Rockcliffe area. Ralston King is Ottawa's first black city councillor who represents Rideau Rockcliffe Ward. He was elected in April 19, April 2019 and re-elected in October 2022. So I've got an interview that I'm going to play right now so we can hear a little bit from the city councillor I spoke to. There we go. To meet you. I've heard a lot about you from uh, news articles and different things like that. Um, this is, uh, for people who don't know, this is Ralston King, and you're one of the city councillors out here in Ottawa? That's correct. So uh, I'm the uh, city councillor for Rideau Rockcliffe, and that also uh, incorporates Overbrook, the Overbrook community where I live. Uh, so it's always wonderful to be able to come down to the community centre and, and participate in, in events. So this is, we're here two days before Christmas as yes. a community meal. Do um, so you want to talk a little bit about um, your outreach here in the community from yeah, that perspective? Well, well it's just wonderful. Uh, right now, uh, there are a number of community meals that have occurred uh, through multiple uh, neighborhoods, uh, including here in Overbrook. Uh, you know, we have a lot of vulnerable people here in, in our neighborhood, and it's important for us to ensure that we, we care, that we uh, provide some resources to people, and that we also tell people uh, where resources can be accessed and we find that uh, community meals are a very great way of doing that. It's also a great way to just show that we care and we're appreciative of people especially during uh, the holiday season when we want to show our appreciation to people and, and ensure that there's outreach to people. So we're really pleased that a number of volunteers came together today uh, to really provide a, a wonderful meal to the community and I think it's, uh, it's wonderful when people can just come together, sit down, uh, you know, chat, uh, enjoy some wonderful entertainment. I know, uh, you know, Chris uh, from CKCU is here entertaining people. I think it's just really uh, wonderful to share time with one another as a community. So, so I'm really pleased to be here. And it's also been a tradition. Uh, before COVID, uh, we had wonderful Operation Turkey Meals here in uh, at the Overbrook uh, Community Center. And I'm really pleased that that tradition is continuing. 
now. That's really wonderful, especially right now during times of food insecurity, rising prices, Absolutely. and also it, around the holiday seasons, people really need to have a sense of community because people are a lot really lonely right now, and there's a lot of issues after COVID and isolation, things like that. It's wonderful to be able to get out and be a part of the community like that. You're absolutely right. It's important to break social isolation, and so that's why it's important to have uh, these holiday dinners where community members can come together and dine with one another and talk with one another and share experiences together and uh, not be alone during the holidays. And so it's very important, especially uh, with our seniors. Uh, so we've had a number of events at uh, OCH properties uh, throughout the ward where uh, it's been primarily seniors. And I really get excited when I see that. You know, uh, They're having a good time. They're uh, you know talking with one another. They're playing games with one another. Uh, they're really sharing the holiday spirit with one another. And I think we need to do more of that. Uh, it builds more community cohesion within our communities and our neighborhoods when people get together and they share experiences with one another and they understand that there are people in the community who care about them. And so, you know, at a basic human level, it's important for us to, to hold more of these types of events in my estimation. Oh, I totally agree. I've been trying to... Uh show people just how all the good things about Ottawa. There's a lot of people that are a little bit pessimistic. There's some negative feelings, but I'm really happy with living here and I feel thankful for in a lot of ways for some of the the community spirit that we do actually have and I want to showcase that more. Well, I'm happy that you're doing that because you're absolutely right. I find that people have become pessimistic and it makes sense. I mean, uh, COVID, the pandemic was very challenging and I think we're entering into a political environment that's very polarized. But the reality is, when you look at our community and you think about what's going on in the world, we have a lot of cohesion here. We have a lot of community spirit here. We have a lot of volunteerism here. Mm -hmm. um, you know, um, there are challenges to our serious challenges to our quality of ice life, and we're seeing that. Whether it's the affordability crisis, whether it's the housing crisis, uh, whether it's uh, challenges around uh, legal uh, drug supply that's uh, really causing harm to many people in the community. But despite all these challenges. We still have an excellent quality of life and we still have people who are committed uh, to ensuring that neighborhoods are the best that they can be. And I think it is important for us to be uh, optimistic, especially during the holidays. And I think it's important for us to really emphasize the good work that a lot of people do. You know, thousands and thousands and thousands of people undertake in the city every day on behalf of other residents. So I, I actually think it's, it's important for us to remember that. We can't always be pessimistic all the time. You see a lot of good work, a lot of good things that people are doing in the community. And I think of the group behind uh, this meal, all volunteers, you know, out of the goodness of their of their heart and their soul, just to uh, provide some happiness to residents in, in Overbrook and throughout the ward. So, uh, you know, the meal here is not just going to be served to uh, residents here, but it's also going to be served to residents, uh, newcomers and, and new immigrants. Um, uh, who are staying in hotels and motels right now. Uh, so it's important for us to really emphasize that we care and to show that we're optimistic as a society, that we know that we're going to be in a better place uh, come next year. So I think it's important to, to, to really emphasize that. This, uh, this interview will air on uh, Christmas Day, actually. And in the coming new year, um, if people want to come out and help you or want to volunteer, what's a good way to get a hold of to, to get involved in this? Well, the wonderful thing is that we have active community associations, especially in my ward, in Rideau Roncliffe Ward 13. So uh, as a first starting point, I always say talk to the community associations. They're wonderful and active community associations in Overbrook, in Linden Lee, in Edinburgh, um, in Manor Park. And the wonderful thing about all these community associations is that they're just not focused on the typical issues like development issues. They're also focused heavily on 
making investments in social services and ensuring that uh, there are resources and volunteerism uh, to assist people in need. So I always say start with the community associations and of course uh, my office is always open uh, to people. People can contact my office and uh, we will respond uh, directly to people's uh, needs and uh, if they're interested in volunteering we can always connect them to the right organizations to volunteer for. As an alumni of the Carleton Journalism and uh, Communications programs, how do you think this helped you prepare for your life in, as a political leader and as an activist, as a volunteer? Well, I must say I'm a proud Carleton alumni. Yeah. I think that uh, Carleton has a well-rounded uh, program, especially around social uh, service, uh, social uh, sciences, and um, you know I've I, I've been very uh, you know thankful for the fact that I've had a well-rounded education. So uh, the journalism program is a quasi-professional program, which meant that I was able to take other courses in history, in legal studies, in social work, and I found that that whole overarching um, experience, as well as the journalism experience, uh, where there's a focus on understanding public institutions, has been very uh, useful to myself personally. Um, uh, I'm a proud alumni, my wife is a proud alumni, uh, uh, alumnus as well. Um, in fact, she sits on the Board of Governors for Carleton, and uh, you know we also believe in ensuring that we make uh, the proper investments in students. So uh, we've been very proud together to have launched a uh, scholarship specifically for black, indigenous, and racialized students who are studying culture, who are studying uh, in the cultural field, whether it's art history, uh, cultural studies, uh, because it's important for uh, people to have those types of opportunities. Uh, to, to really enhance their, their education. And get, education for me is key. And so, um, you know, it's been central. My experience at Carleton has been central in terms of uh, public service. And I know that many other people feel that way as well who's, who've experienced uh, those programs. Not just the journalism program, whether it's art history, uh, whether it's social work, uh, whether it's the communication program, um, history. I mean, I think that. It, you are well-rounded if you attend Carleton. It really does set you up, uh, especially to critically think about the impact of the public institutions. Thank you so much for taking the time to chat with us here on CKCUFM. Was there anything else you'd like to highlight for the coming year? I, I just wanted to really uh, emphasize that uh, you know, campus radio is important. Uh, we've seen some challenges on other campuses in the city mm -hmm. around funding. Uh, um, campus radio and campus radio uh, to me is central um, as a alternative voice for people uh, in the community and a necessary one. Um, alternative views are important, whether it's news, perspectives, music. Uh, so uh, what I would encourage people to do, I know that your funding drive is uh, wrapped up, but the funding drive is, uh, you know, all year. Support campus radio. I think it's important if you want to support, uh, you know, wonderful local amenities and if you want to support democracy actually locally. So I want to thank you for all the, the work that you do. I think local media is actually quite important. And I'm proud of the fact that we have uh, a very robust uh, campus uh, radio station at Carleton. Thank you so much. I look forward to talking to you again in the future and Excellent. following your career. Thank you. Appreciate it. Have a great day. Take care. Merry Christmas. Thank you. That was a wonderful interview, Nate. Thank you. Uh, you said you had a Christmas miracle? Yes. My dear friend Sheena has been in the shelter uh, for a while, a number of years, uh, and and uh, it's very difficult to get housed when you become unhoused, and especially with the rents that are going around today. Um, but I found out about a friend who had a, a basement uh, apartment that was coming up, and uh, so I picked Sheena up at the Shepherds of Good Hope. We grabbed a box of hair dye. <laughs> and uh did her hair uh my neighbor gave her a pair of pants a nice pair of pants and a top to wear another neighbor gave her an excellent winter coat and my dear friend richard bouchard bought her a pair of boots at canadian tire and wow. when she was all in this new outfit i uh, took her down to meet her new landlord and they got along famously 
And that night, she did not go back to the Shepherds of Good Hope. That wow. night, she slept in an apartment, her apartment. That's awesome. Yeah, and it felt so good to have that Christmas miracle for her. And now, now it karma coming back here I am needing someone's help with I mean my sisters have been helping me as well but Sheena's come and she's staying with me helping me with all the stuff that's associated with uh, getting your hip replaced and getting better so it's a wonderful trade-off Merry Christmas, Nate. Merry Christmas to all of you. CKCU loves you. Yes, and that's our show. Thank you for being with us here, and we'll be back again next week. Next week. CKCU. No ending music this time. <laughs> oh, we didn't get ending music, but we got the miracle in. Yeah. Thank you, Nate. Thank, Thank you, you so much, Nate. Eh? Aw, great. Four Happy. years. No fucking home. You go home to Four years. Christmas came early for me. Yep. That's pretty awesome. Thank you so much for being up here. Okay. Thank you for caring for me. Who else will put up with my Make sure to finish the playlist here. Thanks, Gina. Where are many of that? on your unit with the BBC News. The Hamas-run health...